So for question five, uh, we're asked to solve, and that's an important word to me, um, because what, what I observed for a couple groups was I saw people uh, guess solutions, guess what the solution was, and then confirm their solution. When I ask you to solve an equation, I'm looking for um, this process of using algebra. So I, I need to see uh, techniques similar to what I'm about to show you. Um, anything else is just confirming that a, a guessed solution works, which is not solving an equation. So when I look at the first part here, uh, the only thing I probably would do first is go ahead and use the distributive property to rewrite this as plus 4x minus 8, being very intentional as I write this down. So as I look at the left-hand side now, there's two x's and four additional x's. And these aren't factors. These are things that are being added. 2x plus 4x would be 6 of the x's, 6 times x. And I also have this positive 1 and negative 8. When I combine those, I get definitely a negative 7. I'm not in a hurry. I'm looking at it methodically. I can see I've got negative 7. And on the right-hand side, there's an 11. I'm going to add 7 to both sides, completely legitimate to add the same value to each side. Um, 11 plus 7 is 18. And then finally, I'm going to divide both sides of this by 6. And we get that x has to be 3. So x is 3 is our solution. I'm just going to write up that up here. x is the number 3. Um, probably worth it um, to confirm that solution, especially if you want to guarantee you've got the point. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 1 is 7. Plus, so if I put a 3 here, 3 minus 2 is a 1, and 1 times 4 is 4. So yeah, 7 plus 4 is indeed 11. So when x is 3, it definitely makes both the left-hand side become 11 and the right hand side already is. So it's a value of the variable that makes this statement true. Um, let's look at uh, question B. Uh, distributive property on the right hand side, it's a 6 times x minus 30. Over here we've got 4x plus 10. I'm going to subtract 4x's from each side. So that gives me that 10 equals 2x minus 30. I'm going to now add 30 to both sides. So 40 is the 2x and then I'll divide both sides by 2. So 20 is what x is, or x is 20. We can write that down over here. Um, x is the number 20. Uh, for C, this is a problem that probably it uh, has appeared a little bit too soon on the test. Um, I saw several interesting attempts, um, and I'm not going to discuss any of the incorrect solutions. Um, what I want to discuss is this technique for uh, removing fractions, and later we'll call this fraction busters. But I'm going to start by multiplying both sides of this by the 7. So over here I'm going to write it as 7 over 1, 7 over 1. Again, if you have equal things, and, and we're told that they are equal, right? That's what this symbol means right there, that they are equal things. If you have equal things and you divide both sides, or multiply in this case both sides by equal things, you get equal things. Or over on the left hand side, you can see when I multiply x over 7, I'm sorry, the right hand side, x over 7 times 7, this becomes just simply x. And over on the left hand side, I've now got a factor of 7 in my numerator. So I can write 7 times the quantity of 2x plus 1. And in my denominator, I have this factor of 4. What I'm going to do next is multiply both sides of this by 4 to destroy this denominator 4 on the left-hand side. So times 4 over 1. Um, on the left-hand side now, I'm left with 7 times the quantity of 2x plus 1. On the right-hand side, I have 4x. So those steps clear the fractions. I don't have any fractions that I need to be concerned with. Over on the left-hand side, we have 14x plus 7, and that equals 4x. Um, if I take away 4x's from each side, that gives me that 10x plus 7. This side is not gone. It's equal to 0 at this point. And then I'm going to subtract 7. So 10x is negative 7. And then finally, uh, x must be uh, equal to negative 7 uh, tenths. That's a beautiful answer, negative 7 tenths. Um, 
x is negative 7 tenths. I won't uh, check this answer. However, um, this is something that I would really like to talk about in class, uh, checking this with your calculator, just to verify that when you plug in uh, this value of negative 7 tenths in x here and here, that the left and right hand side really do become equal to each other. Because if this is the solution, it has to make that true. And uh, I encourage you to grab your, your TI-84 and check it. Um, you could do it, um, you know, symbolically as well, but checking it with your, your decimals or the fraction, if you wish, um, would probably convince you of the correctness of this solution. Uh, finally, this problem, I think it it would probably be aided if I multiplied both sides by 8 over 1 right off the bat, 8 over 1. Um, when I do that, you can see over on the right-hand side, it just becomes simply 2x. On the left-hand side, 8 over 4 is the number 2. Um, so I can quickly write this as 6. If I don't see that I can multiply 3 times 8 and get 24, and 24 divided by 4 ends up being 6. Um, or I could simplify this. Really, I could think about it as a giant 1, 2, right? It's a, it's a 2 times a 4 times a 3. And in my denominator, I have just a 4. So you can see there's a 4 over 4 there. So this becomes 6. And then when I divide both sides by 2, x clearly is the value 3. So let me write down x is 3.